Are you looking to start using intermittent fasting for fat loss? Maybe you're someone who's actually done some intermittent fasting and now you're looking for ways how to do it better? Well, whatever your level of experience is, whether you're someone completely new to the world of fasting or you're someone who's actually done some protocols like the 16-8 approach with skipping breakfast or maybe the one meal a day approach, in this video, what I'm gonna share with you are actually three things that will make you better at intermittent fasting. So you can use this very powerful strategy to lose body fat and actually keep it off. And a lot of this here was going to be based on scientific research as well as my personal experience because I've done intermittent fasting in a variety of different ways from 2012 or so. I've done a lot of research on the subject. It's actually one of my favorite strategies for getting lean and staying lean because it makes the journey a lot easier. So I wanna help you avoid a lot of the mistakes that made along the way. And also, by the way, in this video, there's no mainstream fitness nonsense, no supplements, no BS, none of those quick fixes. I'm gonna give you the truth and the honest thing you need to hear about using intermittent fasting. Also, my name is Mario Tomic, and if you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe below if you love personal development and fitness. And also make sure to hit that bell icon as well to get notified when new videos come out. And now let's dive into it. So the first thing you need to know about intermittent fasting for fat loss is how hunger works while you're in a fasted state. Most people don't know this, but real physical hunger actually comes and goes in waves. And these waves closely follow the pattern at which you normally eat your meals. So when you look at the research studies, when they have someone who's used to eating multiple meals per day, and now they have them fast for 24 hours, you can clearly see these waves of hunger coming and going and these waves of hunger are related to a hormone called ghrelin which is also known as the hunger hormone. So these waves have a spike and then they go down over time. This is exactly what advanced practitioners of intermittent fasting know is that when you get really hungry, when you're on top of that wave, when you feel like you're starving, you actually just have to wait a little bit. You can get distracted, you can drink some water, you can do something and that hunger will actually go away. This is something that beginners usually when they get it, they freak out, they start eating, they start snacking, maybe they break their fast, or they just don't get that body trained to that new meal pattern because this pattern is actually trainable. So if you train your body properly, you can only be hungry once or twice per day compared to if you're snacking consistently, if you're eating six, seven meals per day, your body is getting trained to eat six or seven times per day and it's going to be hungry six or seven times per day which makes fat loss a lot harder because it's much harder to control calories if you're consistently hungry. That's actually one of the biggest benefits of intermittent fasting is this idea that you can actually control the food intake and you're not as hungry. Now speaking of hunger, a lot of people will actually think themselves into being more hungry and this is called the ironic process theory and more known as if someone tells you don't think about the pink elephant, you're going to think about the pink elephant. So as you're freaking out about hunger and you're thinking about when is the eating window, you're counting the minutes to the next meal and you're just psyching yourself out, you're getting food obsessed, you're getting more hungry and you're getting triggered to be more hungry. So you wanna be thinking more about just letting the eating window happen and knowing that there is that adaptation phase. If you just plow through that hunger using something like more water, more tea, sparkling water, whatever you need to do to actually just train yourself to experience that hunger less, you will find intermittent fasting very enjoyable and it will actually save you a ton of calories and make this journey of fat loss a lot easier. Now, the second thing you need to know about intermittent fasting for fat loss is that intermittent fasting actually works the best when you stick to healthy foods. And I see this mistake with a lot of people when it comes to their diet, when they first discover intermittent fasting is now it becomes an excuse and a free pass for eating a lot of junk food and a lot of processed food in their diet. And this is actually a big mistake because as you get closer to that 10% body fat level or getting closer to seeing your abs, if you're not eating healthy food, you're gonna have a much harder time to stick with that even though you're using intermittent fasting because that intermittent fasting may work in the beginning, but as you have to eat less and less to get leaner, you're gonna hit a wall and you're not gonna be able to go over that wall and you're gonna hit a plateau. Another thing actually why it's not a good idea to eat all that junk food is you have to think long-term. How is this going to affect my health? How is this affecting my longevity? So don't use intermittent fasting as an excuse to eat a bunch of junk food. Instead, still practice that 80-20 nutrition rule where 80% of your food still comes from whole, healthy, unprocessed foods and about 20% can come from those processed foods if you want to do that. So still 
follow the basics of a healthy diet to get the most benefits out of intermittent fasting and your body will love you for that and you're gonna get much, much better results with fat loss. Now, the third thing you need to know about intermittent fasting for fat loss is that calories and macronutrients still matter a lot whether you're fasting or not. I specifically see this mistake with protein intake and so many of those that switch to one or two meals per day and they're chronically unreading their protein amount. They're basically following a low protein diet because they're used to eating a certain amount of protein rich food per meal and while they were doing three to four meals per day, it was okay, but now since they're doing one or two meals per day, they're basically under eating protein. And they're doing that while they're in a fat loss phase, which is risking more muscle loss, they're not gonna be building as much muscle, and they're not gonna get the satiety benefit. So this is a really suboptimal approach, so you wanna be careful not to under eat your protein. Now with calories, there are so many BS gurus out there claiming nonsense, like if you just do intermittent fasting that it will get you shredded, you never have to worry about calories at all. This is not the case for most people and this is exactly why so many guys get stuck at 15 or 20% body fat and they can't break through that plateau because these gurus are not telling you the truth. If you wanna get to 10% body fat, you do have to look at your calories. You do have to manage that as well. Intermittent fasting alone is still great, but it's not gonna be as effective if you're not combining it with managing your calories and your macronutrients. And this is where it really shines. If you combine calories, macros, and intermittent fasting, you have a really effective strategy to get to 10% body fat and actually stay between 10 and 12% body fat if you want to do that. Now, if you do wanna to get to 10% body fat, I have a really cool video that I want you to check out here at the end. It's gonna really help you on that journey to 10% body fat. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to sub if you liked it, hit like as well, and I will see you in that 10% body fat video. Peace.